43 degrees sunshine outside the window on 8th Street. Going to a high today of 56. Could be some wind gusts up to about 20 miles an hour. Good chance of some rain tomorrow. Then it begins to clear out as we get through Friday. And by the time we hit the weekend, sunny skies mid to upper 50s. 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Tim's in the studio this morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Hey, thanks for being here. Thank you. He's got he's got more personality than he I does. do. You know that, he Brian? Does. He just, I mean, yeah. that guy is just, no, I he just oozes personality. I do, but you know not what it, really. It's because it's a Mr. Rogers day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I think <laughs> Tim's in a is? good mood. Yeah. And we're all in a good mood for that. Brian so. Johnson here from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Nice to have you back with well, us. Well, thanks for having me again, you Tom. Bet. All right, let's talk about foundation stuff. Well, we got a lot of things going on I right now. I know you now. do. A um, couple reminders about grant application deadlines. Um, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, that was a group that was started in 2010. A group They've of done a lot women. of good things, They too. have um, over $34,000 in grants um, to different community projects. They are currently accepting applications for projects. Um, the deadline for those applications is April 14th. Um, so folks still have a couple of, of weeks. If you have an idea for a project that um, impacts Fulton County people, um, we'd love to see an application for that. That application is actually available on our website, nicf.org. Um, check that out. Um, that group grants between a few hundred to a few thousand dollars to projects. Um, and always exciting to see what's going on with that. Um, the Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund is also accepting grant applications. Um, those are for projects specifically in the Kiwana Union Township um, area. Um, the deadline for that is May 5th, um, so folks still have a little bit more time to um, get those applications um, completed. But those are, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a Union Township organization, but it has to be directly serving people in Union Township. Okay, makes um, sense. And we have a committee that um, is made up of folks that live and work in that area um, that make the decision on those projects. So it's kind of a neat um thing to see going on there. Um, we have up to $2,500 available to grant from that fund this year. So um, if you have an idea for a project, both of those applications are, are simple to fill out. Um, ask a little bit about the organization, a little bit about the project, and um, a little bit about the budget of the project. So um, pretty simple to complete those applications. If folks have questions about that, um, we're always ava available, myself or Corinne Becknell-Lucas, our associate director, would love to talk to you about ideas you may have for those. So, um, talking about some of the funds, um, it's kind of interesting. We have our granting dollars from the Community Foundation, but things like the Women's Giving Circle and the Kiwana Union Township Fund, um, we have organizations that um, are able to provide grants through their own funds. Um, one of those is the Valley Hometown Fund. Um, that was an effort that was established um, towards the end of 2005 by some um, Valley, Tippecanoe New Valley graduates. Um, and last week they were they met and um, distributed some money. Um, just some examples of what they gave out. Um, the Akron Elementary School. Um, one of the elementary teachers has um, been providing his students with what he calls graphic novels. Um, and it's kind of interesting, he said, especially with, with Akron, there's a lot of ESL students over there, and these graphic novels make it simpler for them to learn um, and read English. Um, and so this has been a, okay. a big movement lately. I didn't realize this until a couple of weeks ago when I saw this, but just how many um, authors are starting to transition into this graphic novel um, type of writing. Um, so the Valley Hometown Fund awarded that project $650 to purchase some graphic novels. Um, Typical New Valley High School, um, they have established, um, a couple of the teachers there have established what they call Tease Boutique, um, kind of a neat project where um, they were finding a big need. Students would have um, job interviews or um, college interviews and they wouldn't necessarily have any suitable clothing to wear. Um, whether it be dress clothing or business casual or, or things like that. And so they've actually established um, this boutique so that students can go in and borrow clothes if they have an interview and, and want to um, be able to dress up for that. Um, 
so they were granted $950 for that. Um, they have a lot of clothing that has already been donated um, and they needed space in the school and some um, furnishings to be able to store this clothing as well. Um, so the hometown fund granted them $950. Um, another one is going to um, the town of Akron um, for a new shelter. This is a, a group of Leadership Academy students are um, working on putting a new shelter up in um, Cutshaw Park. Um, it's kind of an interesting area. Um, going back a few years, um, it used to be the town dump and now it's been transformed into a really neat park area. If you haven't been back there, there's a skate park, there's a disc golf course, there's a dog park. Um, in the wintertime, there's a sledding hill that they can um, use, and there's also a pathway that runs through that. Excellent. Um, but they don't have any type of shelter that they've um, been able to set up. So they're, they're looking at putting a pavilion so people can have events there. Um, and the hometown fund granted $1,025 to that. Um, and then the last one was um, the Jack and Jill Preschool. That's in the Mentone area. Okay. Um, they have been working with um, the library in Mentone, and, and that's not feasible space-wise for them to stay there. So they're actually moving. Um, Tippecanoe Valley has offered a room in their Burkett Educational Center. And it's literally a room. They have no furnishings, and so they were needing some furnishings for the classroom tables and chairs and um, the things that you'd normally see in a classroom. So um, the Valley Hometown Fund granted um, $1,375 um, to that project. So um, it's you. wonderful to see the, the goal of the Valley Hometown Fund is to support projects in the areas of the Fa Valley School District. So that includes your Akron, Burkett, um, Mentone, um, all those different areas, um, and not only school projects, but also community projects. Excellent. So it's been wonderful to see what this group has been able to do um, with their funding. So um, kind of staying on the theme of grants, of course, this is the second year that we have removed the deadline for our community support and impact grants, um, and that's been working very well. Um, people are starting to catch on, so we're getting applications all the time for that, and I just wanted to um, talk about We've actually been able to award five applications this year um, for some different projects. Um, the first one is to a group called Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry. Um, we awarded them a, a $2,500 community support grant. Um, what this group does is they work with local meat processors and if a hunter or a farmer has an animal that they would like to donate, this Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry pays for the processing fees for that and then they're enabled and in turn able to distribute food back to local food pantries. Okay. Um, they estimate um, about 200 meals for each animal that's donated and it's wonderful to see how that um, that group is meeting that need with local donations so it doesn't cost um, the, the processor or the hunter or the farmer or anything to other than just the donation of the meat. Good idea. Um, so it's wonderful to see that. Um, the Akron Park Board, um, there's actually two parks in Akron, um, Pike Memorial Park and also the, the newer um, Cutshaw Park. Right. Um, they have a walking trail that connects the two parks um, through downtown Akron around the elementary school and um, through some construction, the different things that they've been doing, they're needing some additional trees. Um, so we granted them $3,000 for a tree planting project. So in the near future, there'll be some additional trees planted along that. Um, it's always nice to have some shade along the walking trail sure. and, and just some areas throughout the park to um, sit under some shade in the summertime. And so that's a project that they'll be working on. Um, kind of a newer organization in our community um, in Kiwana, there's um, a building and an organization called the Hardery. Um, Diane Tesler has been involved in that community for a number of years, and um, a few years ago, the Baptist Church in the air in Kiwana um, closed, and um, the building was sold, and Diane was able to buy that, and her goal was to turn that into a community gathering space, um, and so that's that's been deemed the Hardery. Um, they've already been able to hold some community events. Um, I know a couple of concerts, okay. um, things in the area. Um, 
and they one thing that they were needing was handicap accessible. Of course, in this day and age, everything that that's a very important part of having a facility that the public uses. Um, so we were able to grant them six thousand five hundred fifty dollars for them to be able to um, connect their sidewalk to a deck that they already have um, with a handicap accessible ramp. Um, so that's um, kind of a new project that a lot of people don't know about the Hardery, but it's a, a newer organization and um, looking forward to some of the events that they've been able to have in the Kiwana area with that. Sounds like a growing it group. is it is and it that was, idea that was kind of a need there there's a couple of gathering spaces of course the library and um, they have a community center built onto the um, fire station but um, this is kind of a neat thing downtown yeah. especially with a festival things like that events can can happen in that area so um, look for we look forward to using that for some of our events in the future another one um, habitat for humanity Fulton County. Sure. Um, they've just done a wonderful thing. Um, I know when they first started, people said, well, our community's not big enough to support habitat. And then some people that were passionate about that got involved. And believe it or not, they're getting ready to build their 15th home in this community. Um, this one is actually going to be in a rural area. So one of the things that they need to do is have um, a septic system installed and also a well. Um, and so we were able to grant them $9,500 to um, help provide some of those needs for that. Um, Habitat is just a wonderful organization that, that helps people who may not be able to make a house payment normally get into a home and then grow into that and also learn some skills in the process. So it's exciting. Um, when we talk about 15, I'm sure they probably have in their minds plans for 16, 17, maybe 18. Um, but just an organization that has had a big impact in, in our community Certainly has. on individuals. So we're excited to be able to support um, those things. And then um, the last grant that we made so far, um, the Fulton County Council on Aging. Um, if you're downtown at all during the day, you see these vehicles that say Transpo on them. Um, and it's amazing to see how that organization has grown. They make a lot of runs. They make they? a lot of runs. Um, when we were looking at this grant application, one of the notes that they had in there was in 2016 they made over 50,000 runs. Um, you imagine how many people ride Transpo sure. on a daily basis. Um, and what they were looking for is actually to be able to help purchase two vehicles. They can apply for some um, outside grant funding, but part of what they have to do is raise some local um, funding for this. So. Um, we granted them $17,600. That will allow them to buy a new um, van and also a 12-person transit vehicle. Um, and it's amazing. One of the stats that, in addition to the 50,000 runs, that jumped out to me is um, about a quarter of the trips that they make are transporting folks to and from work. Um, and it's really neat to see how this organization has, has affected you don't, I don't think people are always aware of how much they actually do unless they've they've seen those numbers and um, you just think about that 50,000 number I know we met with the um, transpo board this last week and um, they said through the month of February they had I think it was close to 5,000 runs just in that month wow. so um, a growing need for that service so it's wonderful to see how these organizations have um, really benefited our community so, <laughs> what was the total amount that was granted, Brian? <coughs> um, so far this year, in, in just community support grants, it's been $39,150. Excellent. Um, and um, while that's a significant number, that's not all the money that we have to grant out this year. And it's, it's wonderful to see as these needs come up. Um, in the past, with our grant cycle, we said this is the deadline for it. Get your grant application in by then. We'll let you know after a while with our new application we've already been able to grant out to some projects that will be happening throughout the year and um, as needs come up we don't make organizations wait for our timeline we're able to react and, and in some cases proactively go out and meet with organizations and say hey we'd like to be a part of this project how can we help so it's very very helpful for those organizations that are applying it is it is so that if an organization say in the past if an organization had an event in September and our grant deadline was October 
they had to look almost a whole year ahead of time to be able to even be eligible to apply for that. So with this new process, it's, it's really been a wonderful thing for us to be able to meet the needs as they arise in the okay. community instead of making the community fit in our, in our timeline. So um, congratulations to all the organizations that receive grants. Like Absolutely. I said, we still do have money. Um, $39,150 is not an insignificant amount. Um, part of the reason why we're able to also do this is because of the successful campaign that we were able to raise um, an additional million dollars in endowments through um, Lilly Endowments Gift 6 Matching Program. Um, so thank you to everybody who contributed to that. Um, but these dollars, the neat thing about this is these dollars do not go away. These dollars are here in our community. Um, we don't have to compete with other communities for these dollars. We know that these are going to be used for Fulton County projects. So it's, it's wonderful to see that and wonderful to see um, the impact that these organizations are having in our community, whether they be serving people in need or providing recreational activities or um, some of those basic human needs like transportation to sure. or from work or the grocery store or, or different places in the community. So it's it's wonderful to see the impact these dollars are having. So um, just to kind of remind okay. folks about the applications we have available, um, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle, deadline for that is April 14th. Um, the Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund, um, the application for that is due on May 5th. Um, then our community support and impact grants, no deadline for that, but if you have an idea for a project, um, we'd always love to talk to you because sometimes we get um, feedback from folks that may be looking to do a project. We can sometimes connect folks that may not know other folks are helping with a similar project, um, but no deadlines on those. All those applications can be found on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can also find news and information about the Community Foundation on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Okay. Um, give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office, 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We always love to talk about what ideas you may have and how the foundation can help um, make Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. And obviously the foundation doing a great job for Fulton County, just uh, in terms of $39,000 already yes, this year. Yes, and it's, it's all because we have generous donors right. um, in our community that have said, you know what, we can make a difference and we want to give to support these needs. and. Um, look at the impact that, that those donations have made now. Brian Johnson, as always, we appreciate your time. Keep up the good work for Fulton County. Well, thank you, Tom.